Comedy, then I need to get back to my U boat. Um, uh, now, I, I need to angle this as well. I am, I am filming this on my little camera. Uh, I might put bits of it up on YouTube if it's funny. It's a, a first time for everything. If, if anyone doesn't want to be identified on film because maybe you're supposed to be in work or in school. Uh, or you're here with an old flame and you don't want the, the girlfriend to see. Um, if anyone doesn't want to be identified on film, you can get one of these off me. If you just leave it here for the next... <laughs> yeah. Thank fuck, I've only got two. It wasn't. They're actually cut-offs from a, a burka factory. <laughs> oh, he's gonna get offended. Clothing? <laughs> I did that joke in England. I did that joke in England a couple of weeks ago. The entire audience went, ooh. <laughs> 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 If you prefer instead, you can have the more traditional blurred face. <laughs> to yourself. Yeah, yeah. I need a for tomorrow night's gig. So. Don't worry, it's not half an hour of that shit. I have jokes. Uh, they were me two best jokes. Let's see here we go. I don't know why I wore this fucking coat and sweat. Um, oh yeah, it was for the, the submarine joke. So, where are we? Is there, is there, Jesus, very fucking, I feel really old looking at this audience. It's kind of, it's, uh, I, I, we get into that. Is there, uh, it's mostly students, is it? Yeah. Uh, fucking hate students. Oh, no, that's the wrong thing to say. Um, I love students and studenting. Uh, the, uh, where, where, which, which, are you all from the same college? Yes, yes, yes. Well, that's kind of several colleges, isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah, is it all? From, is all in the one branch? I don't know what the word is. There's several. The, the, the Northside colleges. Woo! <laughs> Kill. There's two people from Mountjoy Square. Rescues <laughs> are Kevin Street. I don't know. <laughs> Lucky. Uh, is there anybody here that's not a student? Yeah. Yeah. Where, where, and what has you? Are you going out with a student? Yeah. Well, then it doesn't count. <laughs> I was looking for an independent observer. Yo. What you, you, sir? What, what has you here? Uh, I have friends who are students. No, you see, no, you're all, no, all following the word. Have you any like embittered thirty-something alcoholics? <laughs> I don't mean other. I don't mean other comedians. <laughs> Bitter, thirty something. Over, Over here. Over here. I am on a twenty-four. <laughs> yeah, well, at least you're you, you're ahead of it's everybody. Still but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm. It doesn't really matter where you're where, where you're whether you're a student or a non-student. It doesn't matter where you're from. We're all we're all united in our fear of gangs of twelve-year-olds and tracksuits. <laughs> <laughs> It just helps if you've lived a bit more and you're from a rougher part of, of like, because I'm, I'm from, is there anybody in from Ballymun? No. <laughs> <laughs> you took a consensus of the whole room on the way in. Yeah, I couldn't afford a good point. They <laughs> make the jokes to me, you fucker. Uh, the, uh, I, I'm, I'm from Santry, I was just checking the room for Ballymunners before I started slagging the place. 
Um, but it just helps if you're if you're from somewhere rough, because I'm from near somewhere rough. <laughs> so I'm used to the proper like you know stabby tracksuits. <laughs> when, when you see a gang of them in a posh part of town, you can't help but laugh at the fuckers because they just don't have threatening down to the same art. I did a gig the other night out in Dorky. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, and you, you can see the difference in money. If you get the dark southbound, you can just see the difference in money by what all the billboards in the background advertise. <laughs> like the billboards up by Connolly Station, they just advertise basically lime bars and sunny delight. That's it. <laughs> That's the only There's shit people that live around there can afford. <laughs> As you get out towards Dorky, they start advertising the fucking the iPhone 5 or the, the new Peugeot or whatever. I don't know what the billboards in, in Greystones advertise. They're probably selling fucking castles. I've no idea. I've got out that far. But I got off the dart in Dorky and there was a gang of tracksuited youths in white orange tracksuits. That's the first mistake. It has to be, it has to be dirty blue. <laughs> it's uh, But they were carrying bags of cans looking for somewhere to drink, you know, like proper knackers, right? Here's the difference between posh and poor areas. One of them was also carrying a bag of ice. <laughs> Knacker drinking. No proper knacker is gonna spend the money on a pro on a bag of ice if you can still get two more Dutch gold. <laughs> That's more like well, I don't mind roughing it for an evening, but I'm not drinking like a total animal. <laughs> it's strewing back with the lemon. <laughs> I got the name Struan from. I, I just know a gay guy called Struan and seemed to fit. I don't mean he fit, I mean. Yeah. I just pulled it out of my ass. <laughs> Top of your head. It, they're all, they all work. Uh, Struan never made it back. He got beaten up by a guy from Grey. <laughs> Shoved his lemon up his hole. <laughs> Sliced. <laughs> Whatever that means. I'm trying to think what to say to a room full of students because I, I have done a lot of college gigs and I find when I talk about I find when I talk about my horrendous drinking past and my experiences with psychotic women, a lot of you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Because they're all still full of hope. <laughs> Nothing can go wrong and half of you have probably met your future wife in college. Half of you probably have been pregnant by now. Right? It's just uh it's kind of hard to know where to go, because, yeah, it's... Because once you pass 40, you're fucked. You know, my, my musical knowledge stopped in 1993. The last, the last new band I took in was Radiohead. I just hear everything after that is shit. You know what I mean? It's kind of... All, all your, like... Because once you pass 40, you realise, oh, fuck, I'm halfway there. You know? No. <laughs> They're looking at me going two towards there, maybe. <laughs> oh, man. That, the, the feeling of oldness starts. When I was 30, right, I was walking into a chipper. I was living in Kulak at the time, and I was 30. I was only fucking 30. And I was walking into this chipper, and these two girls came running out. They were about 15 or 16, and they nearly ran into me. And I remember one says for me, you be careful, you nearly ran into that outfella. <laughs> Since that day, I've just given up. It's, I, oh. Oh. Okay. You know, it's... Good, well, I mean, even, even, like, even your fucking sex drive is completely fucking shattered. Like, when you're in your 20s, you know yourself, lads, if you get offered sex, you just come in your jeans. <laughs> you're young enough whereby, by the time you get them off, your balls will have refilled. <laughs> you know? When you're 40, when you're 40 and you get offered sex, when you're 40 and you get offered sex, the first thought that comes into your head is, oh, I mean, it's having another shower. <laughs> Ask me in a couple of days when I need a shower. <laughs> And I, I don't know, do, do, do I just try and fucking act 80 now? Do I just pick a style of dress to stick to now for the rest of my life? I look at other, I try, what other 80 year olds do I know? Like I only knew me granny, when she's not 
80 now, obviously, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a long time ago. Over. But she used to do this thing a lot of old people used to do, like your great grandparents. Uh, they'd be walking around their kitchen singing songs to themselves. Songs from the dawn of time that I've never heard before or since. I don't know if it was an attempt by old people to keep music alive in race memory before they invented vinyl. But she'd be walking around her kitchen making banana sandwiches with a fork or something, right? And, you know, just... I'll take the high road, you take the low, la 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 la. And you let them away because they're old. <laughs> but it's not what we're going to be like when we're 80, but with contemporary music. <laughs> Are we going to be there in 2055, walking around our grandkids' kitchens with our, our, our waist up to our tits? <laughs> our, our tits down to your waist, whatever way. <laughs> Are we going to be there in 2055, walking around kitchens singing, I can't take it, I can't take it. a certain dignity. <laughs> That's how you know I'm past 40. That was the most modern song I could think of. <laughs> I don't know any Lady Gaga. In fact, I just nearly called her Radio Gaga. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Or Radio Gaga. We, we, we'll have to change all the old sayings for our generation, so one day you'll have sayings like, A watched torrent never downloads. <laughs> yes! It took me an audience of students to finally get a round of applause for a downloading joke. Thank you so much. Ignorant cunts that go to the laughter lounge just look at you. What's he talking about? A what? That's a tartant. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just. Oh. So, I'm. Uh, I, I suppose. I, I. I. Do we have any uh, alcoholics in the room? Yeah. No, I mean real ones. <laughs> the ones that are in denial. See, is there, this is where I, I gave up bills a, a long. I gave up bills about nine years ago. Well, I recently had the joy of going back on it for various reasons. Uh, it's usually women. Um, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's funny the small little things that, that put you back on drink. Like, I, I, I went through a breakup with a fiancé. Uh, I, I, I got over it. I didn't drink on it. I, I've, I've been beaten up by gangs and had my head stapled back together. I didn't fucking drink on it. I've had other fucking messy situations with women. Didn't drink on it. And then about two months ago, I saw Yoda advertising Vodafone. <laughs> your head, your head just goes off. That's fucking it. That's the, the end of the world. Eh? It's gone full circle now. Fuck anything else. Uh, no, I, 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 uh, no, yeah, I'm, I, I'm an alcoholic, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's weird giving up drink in Ireland. It, 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 it arouses the same suspicion as, as in the film Highlander when his village find out he's immortal. <laughs> <laughs> now I realise I'm preaching to an audience that were born after Highlander came out. I have no idea what the fuck. I feel like I'm in fucking Logan's Run. And most of them don't even know what Logan's Run is. <laughs> All common reference is gone. It's very hard to find out you're alcoholic in this country because, well, the standard's not that high. <laughs> but the problem is, everything is designed by Americans. You know, we got Alcoholics Anonymous from America. There's a big fucking difference between what constitutes a drink problem here and in America. <laughs> you five or six points in one session, anywhere in America, somebody will come up to you and go, I think you could have a problem, buddy. That's, that's not a normal amount to drink. Only in an American accent. <laughs> the, uh, five or six points here is just, I'm on my way into work. <laughs> I meant to say on my way home from work, but work's the same way. The, uh, I, because like, they gave me this leaflet, tw it was 20 yes or no questions, and they said if I answered yes to three of them, I was alcoholic. Um, now, I answered yes to 19 of them. <laughs> I think the only one I said no to was the one involving murder, and even then, I can't be 100% certain. <laughs> with a lot of blackouts. Uh, but the first two questions is stuff you've all done. It doesn't mean you're alcoholic. Question one was, have you ever drank on your own? 
Yes. Mm, exactly! Who fucking hasn't? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Does that mean you don't drink, or you always have a drinking buddy, or you have an imaginary friend? Hey, and say, hang on, I have to. Yeah, he doesn't drink with an imaginary friend. Okay, it's uh, no, but seriously, you like, you might have a drink on your own while you're getting ready to meet your friends on a Saturday night, or 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 going for a job interview. <laughs> They'll say that you don't want to have a job interview. Uh, the uh, it's kind of question two was the worst. Quest this got on a leaflet in Ireland. Question two was, have you ever missed work or college because of drinking? <laughs> <laughs> what? Industry in this country grinds to a halt every Monday and most Fridays and the odd Wednesday just to break the week up a bit. Bill <laughs> Hill, me drink is affecting me work. I only work to pay for the fucking drink. <laughs> it's kind of a catch twenty. Believe me, if you if you if you gave up drink today, you'd never have to work. You could follow your dream to be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm raking it in now. Uh, oh, I don't know. I'm still fucking scared of the world. That's why I miss. That's what I miss most about drink. They actually need. They should put proper questions on those leaflets for Irish people. Like question one before you get anywhere should be something like question one. Have you ever pissed into the wardrobe of someone you vaguely know? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, maybe me drinking's becoming socially awkward. <laughs> Question two, have your friends stopped answering your phone on a Sunday? <laughs> the, uh, if, you, if you even still have it. Um, <laughs> I, I did try the I, I, I tried the, the marijuana plan then for a while. Uh, I'm still struggling with that plan, I'll be honest with you. Um, has anyone here ever ever sampled marijuana? Yeah. 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 I just explained to the lying bastards up the front. I just explained explain what being stoned feels like, just so we're all on an even fit. Being stoned is like, you know when you walk into the kitchen and you've forgotten what you went in for. <laughs> But with a hint of panic. <laughs> I don't know if you remember the, the Olympics swimmer Michael Phelps. I mean, he was probably in the Olympics before you were born. He, he, got, he got done for smoking weed and all his sponsors pulled out on him. Do you know who his first sponsor was to pull out? Kellogg's. <laughs> Somebody from Kellogg's actually went, Pruff! We don't want weed smoking associated with our quality products like Cocoa Pops and Frosted Ricicles. What you say? That's not our target market. <laughs> Kellogg's, that's your only fucking market. <laughs> People only buy that shit at 2.30 a.m. from a garage. And they've gone out to get skins. And they see it down the back. And even then they forget to buy milk. <laughs> People eat that shit out of hastily empty potpourri baskets. <laughs> Just, I, I yeah. See, it all, it all comes down to it. I'm not, I, I think I think drink is a lot worse than weed. It's, it's just because uh, this is the, the look. The worst thing you could do on drink if you're always drunk is probably get into a car, get involved in an accident, some shit like that, right? The worst thing I've ever done stone, and this is the bottom line, I once got so fucked I couldn't stand up and I had to sit through four hours of SpongeBob Square. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if anything, is a lot fucking funnier when you're stoned. <laughs> I strongly recommend it. <laughs> the, the, the babysitting error is just whiz by. <laughs> So, I, uh, I forgot to look at my watch when I came up, so I have no idea how long I'm going to be on. Um, the, uh, yeah. I, I was saying I'm a bit, I'm a bit scared of, of, of life out there. I, I 
especially with the winter coming in, like, just fucking... Cold. Let's be honest, no, scumbags. <laughs> I'm not scared of the cold. Unless it's taking human icicle form and <laughs> throwing icicles at me. Winter stones. But when I'm scared, yeah, that can't happen. <laughs> Jeez, the first time I ever got stoned, I watched fucking John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness in the House with No Lights On. Don't do that. Yeah, um, uh, in an attic. That was fucking great. Um, I, I didn't even make it to the toilet in time. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, that, that whole, by the way, that pissing in the wardrobe thing when you're pissed, I know it sounds bad, but you try fucking shitting in a cot. <laughs> you can get away with it. The, the, what, the baby wasn't in it. <laughs> that family no longer talking. Um, no, kind of, life's just scared of scumbags, because... I was doing a gig recently in uh, the, the Woolshed Comedy Club in Parnell Street. Like, I can advertise that freely because it's it's, it's last night, next Monday. Um, and I was standing out in Parnell Street and I saw, this is something that bugs me about a lot of scumbags lately. They're starting to get decent looking girlfriends. I don't know how they're doing that. Like, you know, well presented women and you, 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 it throws you because you're not expecting trouble. I don't know what these women are doing with them. Maybe they know the apocalypse is coming and they need a man who can get them shit. <laughs> but I was standing outside the wool shed and this couple came. She, I, I honestly thought maybe she's his carer or something. <laughs> well, he, he was a real, you know, a heavy eyelided fucker and she was, she was nice looking. Like, I would have. <laughs> and, uh, and next thing, he pulled out a syringe on me. Now, it's a very fucking scary moment when this happens to you, and she was all, <laughs> my Wayne, he's brilliant, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, give it your fucking whatever, you know, and I don't know what you do when faced with that, do you just hand him your shit and hope he doesn't fucking prick you with it, do you try and run away and hope he doesn't want to after you with it or fuck, fuck it at you, and you have to think really quick on your feet, and what I managed to do just in the spur of that moment, what I did to get out of it was, kick him in the face. <laughs> no. I thumped her in the face <laughs> and ran like a motherfucker. <laughs> and yet, you see, look, you tell a joke properly, you can get a round of applause for hitting women. I <laughs> <laughs> and then you get these fuckers in it that just come up to you all the time. You, if you go outside for a cigarette tonight, chances are you lose three more cigarettes. <laughs> Cunts begging, right? And they come up to you, oh, give me some change. And there's a recession on, right? We don't have change to give them. I'm not giving them money to buy drugs when I don't have money to buy drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say no, because then you go, oh, you're a fucking cunt, and then they try and get into a fight with you, and blah, blah, blah. I found the best way to deal with them is just confuse the fuck out of them. <laughs> just talk back to them as if you're Tom Waits. <laughs> now, okay, there's two people that know this. <laughs> you, you know who I mean in a minute. I, I discovered this completely by accident a few weeks ago. This is going come up to me. And, they are, can you give me some change? And something inside me just snapped. I just went, I can't give you any change. <laughs> I can give you some difference. <laughs> what? Served with a slice of lemon and the bitter taste of a faded dream. I'm <laughs> <laughs> you just fucking weird, I'm just fucking weird. Try it. it uh, no, you need confidence to pull it off, but you know what I mean. It's the same with the same if you're a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know the way there are, there are men who are convinced that they should have been born as women? Like, there are guys that are convinced, I, I'm in the wrong body, and some of them will go on later in life to have sex changes and identity changes. Some of them will never realise it and never admit it to themselves and develop drink problems. <laughs> you know, <laughs> stuff like that. I'm kind of in the same boat in that I'm convinced I'm a man that should have been born into money. Because <laughs> I've been 
working class since I was, I say working class, very few of them actually work, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've been dull class since the day I was born, right? You're born into a fucking dull class a family. It, there's a lot of shit you have to, because you, you have to grow up fast. I, I wasn't made for that. I was made to have a lot of money at my disposal. <laughs> I can't cope in the normal world. I can't make money. All, any, I don't know how much a price of milk costs. I don't know how to drive a car. I know I should have servants to drive me everywhere. It just didn't work out that way. I, I, any plans and schemes I have all involve the use of billions and billions of pounds. If I had billions and billions of pounds, I could fucking save the human race. But no, I'm just fucking dull class, so... I try and make it in something mental like stand-up comedy where you haven't got a fucking hope. <laughs> but you know, you, you labour on with the belief that one day I'll make it and that belief slowly fades each day till one day... That's why a lot of comedians die young, we just put it that way. <laughs> and I worked for 15 years in the printing trade, that was fucking fun. Just for anyone who doesn't know what the printing trade is, it's, bef it, it, it's in the old days when they used to print the internet on paper. <laughs> drank my way out of that as you do and I ended up doing comedy and I'm kind of getting a bit, I don't know if it's going anywhere but there's, there, there isn't really that many places you can go once you've been a comedian. You, the next, there's only two career choices I have ahead of me if I decide to give up comedy. One is masked vigilante. <laughs> Again, you need money for that. You know what I mean? You need money for equipment and costumes and spare ammo and fucking grappling hooks and a back cave. You can't, you can't fight crime from your mother's attic. My window is way too small to crawl in and out of during the night without waking my brother up. And he gets narky when you wake him up because he's repeating his leaving stairs and has to go early in the morning at fucking 38 years of age. That's what happens when you're a fucking dull class. You honestly think even at that late stage in your life, doing your leaving cert again is going to make a fucking difference. <laughs> We're not a college-going family. Um, I was the first great hope they had, and I just blew it. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's where do you get the money to fucking fight crime? You'd, you'd actually have to rob a bank. <laughs> yeah, to fight crime. But it kind of defeats the poor. Maybe that's what all these bank robbers are about. They're guys that just want to be superheroes and they're just trying to get capital together so they can pay to hire a butler. No idea. The second career choice is a uh, cult leader. <laughs> which I, which kind of, I suppose, is closest to comedian. I, I just know that the apocalypse is about to come. We've probably got about 12, 15 years till society collapses. Way. And, hey, <laughs> and the, you need to kind of plan for that now. There's, cause there's basically two groups that are going to rise when law and order collapses, right? You're going to have the travellers. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, because they're, they're the ones with the guns, right? Uh, you're going to have the travellers, and they're probably stockpiling all the petrol. Isn't it? <laughs> and you're going to have basically the, the scumbags, the, the stabby tracksuit fuckers, because they're just insane, so they will stab their way to the top of the food chain. <laughs> I suggest making friends with travellers now. I would even recommend taking yourself a traveller bride. So it's for, the, for when the apocalypse comes, and it's the perfect excuse when your friends find out you're riding a knacker. <laughs> <laughs> I want to buy a village. I want to buy a village and fucking wall it up, about 20 foot high wall like some shit out of Lord of the Rings. Put a castle in the centre where four walls that go out to the four corners. Only let insane people. Don't let an in anybody that believes in somebody else's god. That's just madness. A little bit of a political message that none of you found funny. Uh, and I just, you know, I just let sane people in. Just friends. Fa not even all family members, do you know what I mean? Just, there's just some of my family I would let in. Friends. I'd probably build a separate house for a uh, house each for all of my ex-girlfriends. Uh, just as, no, just as a token of, you know, thank you for being my girlfriend at some stage in my life. You can move your husband and your kids in. It's not, I don't want to ride his shirt. I'll have my own fucking seven tranny brides. They look, at, they look after all my needs for me. Um, all right, students not really down with that idea. The fucking work class love that idea. The, uh, <laughs> go class. I haven't 
really taught any further than that. That's just what I'm working at, my own village. If any of you here have a spare village, go and just stay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's just as a way to create a sanctuary for normal people when we're living in a Mad Max-esque society. <laughs> I'm just thinking ahead. I'm a fan of science fiction. The one true religion. <laughs> exactly. We know that we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing, and like, because this planet is going to come down to a war between atheists and religious. And do you know who's going to win? Religious. No, the atheists. Yeah. I tell you why. Because we're not divided about which god we don't believe in. <laughs> That's that be their Achilles heel. You believe in Achilles. <laughs> So that, that, that leaves me with, with my, my pet brother. I've gone through alcohol, the apocalypse, uh, <laughs> scumbags, drink, yeah. Oh, alcohol is drink, yeah, of course. <laughs> I taught when I gave up drink. This is the weird thing, because what happened, I, the main problem I used to get involved with, with when I was drunk was I'd get into trouble with women. And I, you know, you're, you're always being fucking, you're always, whatever. Uh, when I gave up drink, I thought, I will never be in trouble with a woman again in my life. <laughs> Fucking no chance. It increases, if anything, because you know you're aware of it 24 hours a day. <laughs> and while, just while I have women here, I need to get a few things off my chest. <laughs> now, I don't want anybody getting upset at any of the following jokes. I, I, a friend of mine was in a comedy club in Galway recently, the Roisin Dove. And he, he, he got talking to a punter about comedy, and my name came up in conversation, because I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> it's just luck that I got on after the Delamere. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, my name came up, anyway, this punter said to me, friend, he says, have you heard of that Dublin comedian Robbie Bonham? And my mate went, yeah, yeah, he's a friend of mine. And this guy said, he's very funny. He's a misogynist, but he's very funny. Now, two things here. One, that's not strictly true. I'm not very funny. <laughs> two, I can see I'm going to have to explain what the word misogynist means <laughs> to some of the audience. Can anyone tell me what a misogynist is? No. Hate women. Hate women. Hate women, yeah. Uh, I hate a woman, yeah. The, uh, no, it, it's a guy that hates women. Now, I need to make it very clear, women. I don't hate yous, I'm just on to yous. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> Tell yous now, do you know, I don't think relationships are even going to exist anymore. No relationship can get past its first eight weeks with the fucking internet. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. See, I'm in a, I'm in a weird place, because I'm 42 now. But I, I became... See, this is why women's prerogatives is the first thing. Women's prerogative is something that wrecks my head. Women's prerogative, as far as I can work out, and I just want to see if it's the same for this generation. Fuck, I sound old now. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, ladies. As far as I can work out, women's prerogative means a woman has final say on every decision in a relationship. Am I right? Yeah. Even the men said yes. <laughs> These are learning. <laughs> Women, you can even change plans on us. Lads, you might think you know what you're doing next Friday. You get there and discover, surprise, surprise, she's moved the goalposts again. <laughs> to, to include an eight-hour visit to her parents. <laughs> Fucking Kells. <laughs> men! You're not a man. <laughs> men! Do you think? Have you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was hard. <laughs> I have to now, while I'm telling this joke, rethink the tranny jokes that I had started. <laughs> yeah, the comedian will find out later. A <laughs> comedian will find out later. <laughs> <laughs> Does it going to be any comedian? <laughs> Name Colin. She's a transsexual, doesn't mean. <laughs> I know 
some very... No, no, they're all so... <laughs> But lads, have you, have you ever tried to change plans on a woman at the last minute? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Are you all single now? <laughs> I was guessing. Yeah. Fucking don't. Because you will never hear the end of it. They will just start whinging and slapping your chest. It's all... The church was booked and all our friends came to the <laughs> See, you wouldn't clap that if you knew how true it was. <laughs> this happened to me three years ago. Uh, I broke up with somebody six weeks before our wedding. I know. Fucking up. Father Ted found her. Or else that's Ray Lennon in the room. The, uh, but this is how good I am. This is how good I am. We're still fucking friends. <laughs> I, well, I, at least I think we are. She, she, so what happened was, I six weeks before the wedding, and I, I, I'd been with her for ten years, and we were six weeks away from getting married. I just went, I, 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 I'm not in love with this one. We were together for the wrong reasons. I won't go into that yet, but... <laughs> it's kind of, I just wasn't in love with her, I honestly just was, I knew I wasn't in love with her and I knew I had to say something before the big money got put down on the web, because it was her money, and I just went up, now I had to work myself up to the courage to say this, it took me a good fucking six or seven years, <laughs> so, yeah. I just, I'm not in love with you, I don't want to get married, and her exact response was, Thank fuck you said something. <laughs> I was waiting till closer the wedding day. We shook hands and we just stayed friends ever since. It's, it actually went so well, I've no jokes about it. <laughs> I was hoping she'd go psychotic so I'd get at least 10 more minutes of material. If I'm honest, I only broke up with her to get new material. <laughs> now I find myself on my own with no new jokes. <laughs> How long have I got left? Or, uh, uh, what's his name? Aiden? Um, Whatever. Uh, well, it's 10 to 11, sure. What's the crack? Uh, finish up, Robbie, will you? Yeah. Keep going. I'm towing your car. 40. <laughs> 40. 50 minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's kind of, do you know what? When you suddenly find yourself single in your 40s, it's a little bit like being Doctor Who. <laughs> In that, you're now either hanging around with women way younger than you, or you're running away from fucking monsters. <laughs> Quite frankly. This is where I usually lose the women in the crowd. I, if you, women, if you find any of these jokes in any way violent, torches or offensive in any way, I'm quite a small, wiry little guy. <laughs> Every girl in this room tonight could, if they had to physically take me. I am no threat whatsoever, okay? You'd probably like it. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was hoping somebody would see that as an opening. Not a guy. <laughs> Depends how desperate I get. I, know, I have this weird thing with women. Like, a lot of women... I don't know, it's, it, do you know what fucks with me, like role playing or, or fantasy, I, I've met women that are into BDSM, I've met, met women that are into just role playing or whatever, and I, I just, to be honest with you, my, my, my ideal fantasy when, when I'm, I'm sleeping with someone is I like to pretend that they're not a psycho. <laughs> Just once. It'd be nice to think that something like that could actually happen one day. It's uh, I don't know. I just think I have on a bad look, which is it's kind of it's 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 it's, it's weird. And particularly because I I did I waited a year after I broke up with my ex uh, to have sex with anyone because you need to leave a period of grace. So it, it looks like really? cared. <laughs> <laughs> but after a year, I, I just crack and went, oh, I need sex. I need to make sure my bits still work. I just come out of a 10 year relationship, so I hadn't had sex in five or six years. <laughs> I don't know where you go to pick up women at 41. I ended up in some nightclub on Georgia Street. <laughs> No, I did actually meet a nice woman in one of the clubs down there uh, 
dragon, is it? <laughs> no, she was lovely. She was dressed nice, everything, right down to the scarf. Couldn't talk to her. <laughs> she, no, she was lovely. And we, we got talking and we, we clicked and we ended up kissing. Best kiss I have ever had. We went back to Korgaf, she invited me back, I went, fuck, I'm in here, and we were messing around on her couch, and then that's obviously when my hand went down her underwear, and I'm not kidding, she had a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, it's not what I was expecting. <laughs> Disappointment. Think, yeah, you, you think you know what you're getting, and then you get hoodwinked at the last minute. <laughs> What the fuck is going on out there? The world's gone mental. <laughs> so yeah, I gotta finish up shortly. Um, the uh, mm. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you find yourself standing on a stage in front of sixty or seventy students at a slight erection. <laughs> where, where you realise that the second you've said that, they all momentarily glance at your cross. <laughs> I, I don't I don't have an erection. Just just for anyone out thinking well he's a tiny cock. <laughs> God to be honest with you, my sex life is largely internet based, so it's not the length that counts, it's the bandwidth. <laughs> I should have gone on that round of applause. <laughs> Shit. Um, I just have one more thing I want to get off the chest about women because it, it's something that I, I don't I don't know if it's unique to Irish women or, or what it is, but it's the nagging. Because <laughs> Irish women, you know, I still get ghost nags from my ex. <laughs> like when I'm in the shower. I can still hear her voice telling me to wash particular body parts properly this time. <laughs> and to be honest with you, that's advice I can still use, so I don't mind that so much. But what happens with most Irish men is, because uh, you're probably all in the early stages of relationships, if any of these are in relationships, but after about year four, the nagging mm -hmm. becomes this background noise <laughs> that you just become able to zone out involuntarily. <laughs> And girls, what you find yourself having to do is you have to come up with more inventive nags <laughs> for them to, to penetrate our nag force fields. <laughs> like the last the last two weeks I was with my ex, she started nagging me about weird shit. Like just to get through to me, she she nag me about stuff I refuse to use. You know, like credit cards and Debt condoms. <laughs> Dental floss. Yeah. I was gonna go with easier things of course and build up to something sexual. <laughs> Comedy technique. <laughs> but yeah, condoms. <laughs> toothpaste. The right hole. <laughs> That's the best response I've ever gotten to an anal sex joke as well. And just on the off chance, that was just a joke by the way, just on the off chance I was going to get lucky with anyone here after the show. I just want you to know I'm not into anal sex, okay? I, 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 I've never had anal sex. I've no, It seems a bit disgusting to me. It seems a bit pointless and there's a perfectly nice hole just two centimetres away. It's not like she left. <laughs> long and short of it. Fucking microphone Viagra, I don't know. Well, it's not like she left her vagina over the far side of the bedroom, you know what I mean? It's not like you have to walk across the cold floor in your bare feet just to fuck it. Just saying I'm not into anal sex, right? I might try it once. If she's really hot and her penis isn't too big. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Robbie Bonham. Thanks for listening to my nonsense.